in life there's only a certain amount of time you have each day to enjoy all the activities you're involved with and the company that you decide to be around. There's an old saying that you're the average of the five or six people closest to you and the people closest to you affect who you are as a person, your personality. So how do you make sure that you construct the best version of you through association with others? Well, we're going to talk about today the top five types of people to try and avoid. There are certain people that will affect you negatively and a lot of times you find out about it long after you've established a relationship with them, either friendship, personal relationship, business relationship, romantic relationship. And these are the types of people, identities, that can be harmful to you. Maybe not harmful in terms of causing physical injury, but over time they will erode and degrade your personality and be corrosive to your mental health. And a lot of times at first, these people seem harmless enough, might seem friendly, they might seem like they're good colleagues or associates or companions, but very subtle signs early on will show you how they will cause damage to you in the long run. The first type of person we'll talk about is what's called the mooch or the scavenger, where their only relationship or contribution to another person is not to contribute but to consume or be a parasite of that person if all they do is they take from you and it could be taking things like money it could be taking favors it could be taking um, assistance look in any friendship relationship there's always going to be times you help out the other person it's a two-way street right you make compromises you help people you support people that's what good human beings do and good positive uh, members of society do you help others you're kind-hearted you're caring but if you notice that the other person is always the recipient of your care and consideration and assistance over time that's a red flag now look there's people that go through a hard time and might need help for days weeks months even it's not that it has to be an even playing field every day every week every month it can shift back and forth don't try to keep score. Don't try to keep a ledger of who helps out who more. The bigger picture is, is the person overall a taker versus a contributor? Are they a collaborator or are they a parasite? And again, you're not trying to keep score because that's not fair. Because if you keep score, that's not a friendship. That's a battle. It's about the mentality of the person. Are they... A scavenger and you can look how they treat you and how they treat others because even if they treat you okay at first if you see that they're longer more durable relationships or more mature relationships have deteriorated to where they're a scavenger that's gonna happen to you too many times they gravitate to a new partner because just like a parasite once you consume all of the resources from your host you have to move on to another host so just because a person is nice and maybe giving you lip service or giving you um, comparison you know, assistance at first doesn't mean it's going to last. Sometimes that's their price of admission to find a new person to mooch off of. Because even if they're a nice person, even if they're fun to be around, even if they are a good companion, if all they do is take, in the long run, it's going to wear you out. You're going to get resentment towards that person. And once they see that you are no longer a source for power for them or energy or resources, whatever it is they mooch off you, they're not going to be as nice. They won't be as good of a companion. Sometimes their price of admission to you is being a good friend, being a good companion, as long as they're getting from you whatever it is. Even if you voluntarily think that being a resource, a one-way street for this relationship is good for you. In the long run, it will wear you down too. It won't be something you'll be able to sustain even if you want to because it'll just be a constant power draw and your battery will run out. Again, it's not always money. It could be favors. It could be advice. It could just be a shoulder to lean on. 
look, we have to lean on each other sometimes, but if the person's always leaning on you and you don't have the ability to vent your stories or talk about your problems, that's not going to be durable or sustainable for your relationship. So mooch, you want to avoid. Number two is what is called a fame hound. If their primary pursuit in life is to have notoriety, fame, conspicuous celebrity where they just need to be recognized, that's a red flag because it means they're not there to be a part of a tribe. They're not there to be part of a family or a group or a team or relationship. They're there just to be a figurehead. You can recognize these people because they often do what's called holding court, where at a group, at a party, they'll be standing there one foot up on a chair, kind of telling their stories and kind of being a, um, a king to the group, not asking questions, not being curious about others. They're just there to be seen and kind of be an influencer to the group. Look, being an influencer is not necessarily a bad thing, but... You can't make a relationship out of somebody who just wants to be the only center of attention. Attention needs to be spread around to others. Because if you're only giving attention and not getting attention, again, that will drain your attention bank. You only have so much attention and care in your system. And if you're just giving it to a fame hound, somebody who just wants to have collect as many friends as possible, be as well known as possible, have as many awards, credentials, accolades, certificates as possible, then that's not going to serve you any. And you just hanging on their coattails, at the, in the long run, you're going to have, again, resentment. This is where these go. Look, these are not new things. I'm sure that a lot of this you can relate to. You've been in relationships like this. The other danger is if you see this happening to you being mistreated by a mooch or a fame hound, a lot of times your reaction to that is, well, I'll flip the script. I'll be the mooch and I'll mooch off others to try to make up for it. The problem is now you're just as bad as them and you won't be happy either. Because if you are just receiving accolades or resources from somebody else and never giving back, you know, it might sound good from a standpoint of greed and avarice and collecting as many resources as possible, but part of what makes humanity enjoyable is giving to others and sharing to others. Look, you don't have to be a martyr either, but it has to be a two-way street. Number three is a yes person. And this is what we're just talking about. You also don't want to be around somebody that just constantly agrees, yes, follows you around, puppy dog, sidekick submissive type person because you want somebody to be able to contribute something. You want somebody better than you at something, maybe smarter than you at something, maybe more skilled than you at something, maybe more knowledgeable, more insightful, because when you have those conversations, those interactions, you want to be able to learn from the other person, gain from the other person and give back to that person. Having a mutual tapestry of two people being different than one another. You don't want a clone of you, but you don't want a yes person either that just always agrees everything's right because it, you're going to get tired of it. You're not going to like the fact that you're not challenged on things because we all have decisions we make that we're not sure of. We want somebody else to check us, to call us out on our BS. And a yes person is never going to tell you things that might be improvement, even something as simple as, look, you got a piece of spinach in your teeth, right? You want people to tell you about things that can improve your life and see your blind spots. A yes person will never point out negatives. And even though it might seem appealing for a short period of time, at some point you're going to get tired of it. More importantly, that person will have resentment. And what happens a lot of times with yes people is they're waiting for you to give them credit for agreeing with them all the time. You're, they're waiting for you to give them some gift because they've been submissive to you. And when you don't give that because you just think that that's how the relationship is, now they'll get resentment. All of a sudden, this person is going to be angry. They're going to be mean. 
They're going to take it out on you. Maybe be vengeful to you. And you might not expect that because they've always been a yes person, but all of a sudden they're going to realize their own submissiveness and get resentful and they're going to hate you for letting them do it, even though it wasn't your fault. So a yes person is also a ticking time bomb in many cases. Look, there's times in our life that we just need a yes person around just to kind of help us through a bad time or to give us our self-confidence back. But in the long run, you don't want to be attached to that person as a long-term life associate, partner, friend. Number five is an excess risk taker. You all know this type. They'll jump into any dangerous situation. Could be physical danger, could be emotional danger, psychological danger. They get into scary relationships. They do dangerous hobbies. They take risk with money, with their job. And it takes many forms. But you know what I mean by a risk taker. They're not taking practical decisions. Look, we all want excitement in our life. And if you want to go bungee jumping, that's fine. And if you want to, let's say, watch a scary movie, that's fine. Or maybe even have a, that one friend that you know is just ambitious and always doing interesting things that you want to follow along, that's fine. But somebody who's almost a self-destructive risk taker, they're just waiting for their actions to catch up with them. They burn the candle at both ends. Could be somebody that never can hold down a job because they're always, you know, saying something volatile. It could be somebody who is always taking risk with money, scary investments, Bitcoin. Maybe they always count on something to save them from all their previous problems. Just one Hail Mary pass, one desperate attempt. You know, they go to the casino, they bet, they bet, and they lose almost all their money. They take all the rest of their money, put it on one blackjack hand, right? Risk takers, because at some point that risk is going to affect you. The consequence of that risk, the danger, is going to land on you and it's going to cause you problems. And you didn't even get the benefit of the thrill of the risk. And that's where a lot of the motivation for a risk taker comes from. They like that thrill of the risk and they know that there's danger behind it, but they're just hoping that something about their actions is going to pull them out of the fire. They want the benefit of that risk, the, the, the um, narcotic effect of that risk thrill kind of mind drug of being exciting, knowing full well it's creating consequence, but they want to take even a bigger risk to try to fix the consequence. That's kind of a, like a catch 22. It's almost like a paradox. The more they take risk, the more they're in trouble, the more they take risk to save them from trouble. It's a dangerous thing. You can get caught up in it very quickly and it can hurt you. Even if it doesn't directly affect you, just being around that person might make you normalize risks that you normally wouldn't take because you see your close friend doing it and maybe you'll try it out too. Next thing you know, you might get caught up into it. A risk is addicting. It's seductive. It's thrilling. And if you see you, do, you try a couple out, and there's not a big consequence, you might do more of it until it's too late. Number five, the last one is what's called an unhappy mean. Look, a lot of people are just generally unhappy about something. It might be prior experiences of their life. It might be their current situation in life. It might be fear of the future. They're just unhappy. And what happens is when people get unhappy, a lot of times it turns into being mean to others. Because if they feel they're unhappy, they can take meanness deployed to others, subject others to meanness, and that makes the others unhappy too. And it's just like a dark cloud around them that if you get too close, the dark cloud covers you up too. Now, here's the one exception. This number five, there is an opportunity to create a relationship with an unhappy mean. If it's not chronic, meaning that they're just unhappy about something that maybe you can help them through. You can help them out of their funk. Whatever it is that's bugging them. Maybe it's a recent life event, a divorce, death in the family, loss of a job, financial strain. Maybe it's just boredom. Something makes somebody unhappy and because of that they're cranky, they're mean, they're just kind of a little bit annoyed. If you know deep down inside they're generally a happy, upbeat person and they've been that way their life, they're just going through a phase, that's a different story. You could be a valuable resource for them and help them. 
But if somebody is chronically just always unhappy no matter where they are in life, no matter what they're doing in life, then it may be something beyond your control. It may be something that you have no influence over and the only influence is going to be them making you unhappy and mean, not you trying to fix them. So don't be a martyr. Don't stay in it too long. Keep your distance from all these people. If, if there's something about a relationship with any one of these types that's beneficial to you, that you want to participate in, that's fine. Maybe somebody's on your softball team and you like playing softball and you're not going to quit the team because there's a mooch on the team. Just don't become good friends with them. So there are compartmentalized, firewalled interactions you can have with any of these types that could benef benefit you. But if you're not careful... The, the power, if it's too strong, can suck you in like a waterfall. And you can't get out. So be aware of those kind of people. You can identify them. Look, it's not new information. I'm sure you've seen all this before. It's not like I'm giving you a new perspective on these people. You've seen all these kind of people. You may not have identified them with these exact words. You may not have identified them as being this toxic. But you knew something was wrong and you knew that the relationship failed or it was troubling to you. And these are the five most common types. There's other types of people you want to avoid, but these are the common types. And even people that you thought were other problems fall into one of these categories. Maybe it was a relationship that failed. Maybe it was a marriage that failed. And you might think, well, it's because they were a cheater. Well, they maybe weren't a cheater. Maybe they were a mooch. They were just scavenging health from you until they could get it from somebody else. Maybe they were a risk taker, and that's why the marriage failed. Maybe you had an employee that you counted on that was very important to you, and they let you down. They betrayed you. Maybe it's because they were a risk taker. Maybe it's because they were just unhappy and mean. Maybe because they were a fame hound and they wanted to grass is greener somewhere else. The failure of any relationship falls into one of these categories. The most dangerous one, believe it or not, it may sound innocuous, is the yes person. Even though while you're around that yes person, it seems safe, it doesn't seem dangerous, it's worse because it can sneak up on you. You can allow yourself to become closer and more attached to a yes person because it seems comfortable until it blows up. Like we said, it's a ticking time bomb. Everybody else, the mooch, you're going to keep your distance. If you see them always trying to borrow money from you or always taking from you, you're going to push back a little bit on that. So you'll keep a little bit of a firewall between you and them. A mean person, you're not going to be that endeared to. The most dangerous one is a yes person because at some point they're going to be overwhelmed by all the giving that they feel like they've provided and they're going to want to take back what you didn't know that whole time is you were building up a debt with them an obligation a deficiency of judgment that they, they think you owe them and at some point they're going to decide you owe me and i'm just going to take from you you never agreed to this debt you never agreed to a loan of goodwill and agreement but they think that this whole time you should have known that they were giving to you and you didn't take it. That's why with a relationship, it's important to check in to make sure nobody feels like they're at the short end of the stick on the favor bank. Make sure that people don't feel like that you're letting them down. Sometimes people won't speak up about what they think. And it's important to get that communication out there. So avoid those kind of people in all areas of relationships. Again, personal relationships, intimate relationships business relationships, friendships, family. Some of them can be fixed if they're discussed in, in detail. Some of them might need a third party to discuss it with you. But hopefully that'll give you some insight into see these before you get too far into them and either decide you want to pursue the relationship or back away from it or maybe try to change the person or, or recognize where they're coming from.